Um, James, I suppose probably up ahead if you want to look back, sort of reflection on, on the game again. Mate, you you won best dressed in here anyway. Yeah, yeah, nice it was a million bucks. Second best dressed. <laughs> um, yeah, a reflection on the game. Uh, very very good. Uh, we had a, probably a thirty minute purple patch right at the start where we did everything we wanted to do. Um, and we came out with a with a fairly decent buffer. I guess probably post that we put ourselves under a bit of pressure, and we I guess we handled a bit of that pressure well. But the um, the problem was is that we put ourselves under it. You know, we gave them a lot of access, um, something that we said we didn't really want to do. And away from home, you've got to win all those little battles. Um, and yeah, we just gave them too much opportunity. How much better do you think you need to be this week? Uh, a lot, yeah. Um, obviously it's a whole new beast around the corner fortunately we're playing France at home and um, a lot of those 50-50 calls hopefully will go away but we know if we get across our, our own detail we can um, hopefully do a job France weren't at the best so we can is that a, a good or a bad thing um, oh, I mean it doesn't like they're a world class side you know they've they've shown it for a good couple of years they've you know, nine, ten combos, pretty scary. Their back rowers are world class. They've got a midfield that's very dangerous and a back three who would put the shivers up most um, teams. So when you look across individually, they've got some pretty good firepower. So hopefully they don't uh, string it all together here. Yeah. Is it as a grand slam decider? Would you go Jesus. Along with that? Um, not really, no. It's uh, the second game of a Six Nations. I don't, don't want to get too far ahead of ahead of ourselves and I'm sure they, they'll be saying the same things it's you know the old cliche one game at a time and um, you know we'll we'll take it like that James um, Andy mentioned after the match uh, again just about any resilience I suppose in this side where you know dealing with the injuries the bus being late whatever being able to roll with the punches is that something you can see in the squad yeah um, you know you just got to take the good with the bad and um, you know it was Obviously, heartbreaking for the likes of Jamo and um, Tig during the week as well, being ruled out, and um, obviously Churchy. Um, but you know the boys who were brought in to uh, to replace them played outstanding, and they did exactly what was needed of them in a very testing situation away from home and and uh, against Wales. So we were we were happy with how the boys fronted. There was no backward steps by by any means, no. Dave, you've been involved with the squad for a good year. Just to go on to that point about like the last minute inconveniences, do you feel as a team now you're better equipped to deal with those kind of things than you might have been five, six years ago? Definitely, yeah. I think um, Faz likes that little bit of pressure and those kind of situations where, you know, maybe players drip, drop out and see how lads react. And uh, I think the squad is in such a, a place now, it's next man up. Um you see that in training during the week, how competitive it is. We actually said over in Portugal the, when we were training both teams against each other that you wouldn't know which team is actually playing against Wales, which is, I think, a great headache for the coaches. Um, yeah, so it is in a good, it's in a great spot. And what point on Saturday did you get pulled aside and get told, all right, you're talking out today? It wasn't until the morning of the game, but... Paulie on the way out in the elevator just said, "Be ready, kid," and he's uh, as he does. But uh, I knew I I prepared all week as if um, I was being involved, so I was just ready to go. And just from your own personal point of view, then obviously you hadn't played since the end of the last Six Nations with Ireland, and you'd missed out on the main squad in in the autumn. Was there a point maybe in the last few years? Did did you think you were kind of? Just on the outside, looking in, trying to trying to sneak back in. How, how much did you think you could get back in for the Six Nations? Uh, yeah, I had a bad injury at the bad uh, at the end of that Six Nations. I'd get two discs shaved in my neck, and you know you you're out for a considerable time, and you're looking on and you're seeing what the team is building, what Faz is built here. You know, it's, I always I was actually chatting with Pete the other day at dinner. We were just saying. Obviously, everyone talks about how good an environment is here and it's not rubbish. Like, it actually is a real enjoyable place to be, but it comes from the top down. You know, Faz has got great people in uh, and it filters down to the players. Um, it's such a good place to come in and get better every day. And, you know, I was, as I said, I was not involved. You're watching on and you're desperate to, to get back in. And uh, fortunately, you know, I just 
put my head down and um, worked away and got myself back in. Um, but it's it's where you want to be. It's a, it's an incredible environment and um, tough task this weekend, but it's a great place to be. For the scrums in France, came well out on top of the scrums we played last season. Um, obviously, it's going to be a massive area of focus again this week. Yeah, it's a huge area. Uh, there's no shying away from the French scrum. You know, it's, you look at the top fourteen. You look at France. It's uh, what they base their game around. So it's going to be a, a big challenge for us. But we'll uh, put all the steps in ready to be prepared for it. And Dave, just when you said there that you were watching on, hoping to get back into the squad. Was there ever any doubts? I wasn't. I was hoping, yeah, but I believed, you know, I had massive belief in myself um, t- that I would get back in if I could get back fit. Um, it was the worst injury I ever had. Uh, the, I lost kind of power down my hand through uh, getting those dish shaved and it was uh, and unnerving at times, wondering whether the power ever came back. It was a couple of months with the great S&C and rehab coaches down in Munster and it just wasn't coming, wasn't coming and then all of a sudden it came and once I saw a bit of light I went with it and just built myself back up and uh, worked away to try and get back in so I'm um, feeling very fortunate to be in here and I suppose you don't know the saying, you don't know what you have until it's gone, you know, really resonates with me now, you know, you, you're out of the environment um, through injury or selection or whatever and then when you get a second crack at it to get back in, you want to take it with both hands and make sure you're in here as long as you can. James, um, we might be standing you to follow somebody who's just called Johnny Mitchell there. <coughs> that's a bit Yeah. All right. Um, there was some some certain fear on on, on the Les websites and stuff about that you weren't coming back when you disappeared back to to. Um, yeah, to catch a bit of sunshine before. Uh... Yeah. So could you just I appreciate the personal matter, but yeah. could you just tell us you're back, you're back for the moment or you're back for now? Nah, mate, I'm um you can't get rid of me, unfortunately. I'm like a bad smell. And um sure look I'm back, I'm not going anywhere and uh look I'm ready to rumble. Yeah. yeah. And we delighted to be back. I mean, straight yeah. back in um with a situation where Andy just, just welcomes you back in straight, pick up stuff. Did you feel as though you felt you you, you got in pretty quickly? Um yeah, well like you know, I'd, I'd told Faz that I had to pop home for a couple of weeks and, um, you know, I'd got in touch with uh, J.O. and all the medicals and everything and we got across everything I needed to do to make sure when I did come back, I hit the ground running and, um, you know, came back and straight into Portugal. It was the first time I trained with a team for three and a half weeks and, you know, I, I felt like I was in great shape and, you know, like I like I said, I, I did like I didn't skip a beat. You know, I made sure I got across everything. And um, see, you break know, was, try the weekend. He was at home. <laughs> speed um, run for a couple of months. Nice. Um, yeah, it was good. You know, it was it was nice to I guess be given the opportunity and that that trust was there. That Faz gave me the opportunity after some good training and um, to be able to put in a performance that the team was happy with. That's that's all that really matters. Uh, yeah. My cousin's been thrown out of the band and he got a horrible haircut. <sighs> Man, he's got a horrible haircut at the moment. He is, um, my my wife, <laughs> he looks like a bit of a Karen at the moment, eh? like he's going to ask for the manager. So <laughs> he's, um, no, he's, ah, uh, sure, look, Max Mac, you, nothing's going to stunt him from his, uh, how he is, so nice. Joe, sure, just said the French team didn't look much like France Slam when you did last year. How much better do you expect them to be? Um, you know, like I I know they, they would be disappointed with their performance against Italy away and credit to Italy, they fronted up physically. Um, that first half was very, very uh, messy. I think both sides would would say that. And then the second half was a proper test match and came down to a few moments that France ended up winning. It was a kick battle into um, Italy giving away a penalty, went to a mall, got around the corner and uh, Jalabert scored. So that there was a telling sign. But we know that a different French beast, the French that we know is going to turn up and we're, we're prepping for that. And, um, can't wait for the opportunity to test ourselves against you know the team that won the Grand Slam last year. And just a question that was asked on television. You know, if you, if you can't beat France in Dublin, how can you beat France in the World Cup in France? Jeez, great question. Um, look, we're um, <laughs> one game at a time, you know, and this is the opportunity we do get. We, uh, you know, Last year, away from home, probably gave them a few too many easy points in the first half, fought back in the second, but we weren't quite there. I think we're a different team now. 
compared to where we were 12 months ago and we're going to go out there and give it a good crack and sure look if they beat us and the better team wins that's that's what happens it's rugby it's sport and um, you know we're going to leave no stone unturned to make sure that we turn up in a good shape every time. Nah, no, nah, it's still a long time, but obviously you want to keep building and hold on to momentum for as long as you can because I think we're in a good place. And if we can keep building and getting better, why, why wouldn't we? Yeah. James, one of the things that, that Andy said about last year was the, that Ireland failed to be themselves against France. <clears throat> to begin with in that game when, when Andy talks about being yourself what, what is that identity it's um you know it's imposing a game that we know we can play um you know it's tight shapes it's at the line it's being combative and physical and um it's very very easy to say and then you go to France and get walloped in the first few contacts and you start second guessing yourself but um you know that's going to happen it happens in a game where you're going to lose a few battles and have to play a bit smarter but at the end of the day, we know that we've got a shape that can break down most teams if we get our own stuff right. And the French are physical. Uh, I think it would be silly to say that they're not bigger than us. Uh, we think we're fitter. If we can get around them, work around into next holes and hopefully get a couple of weak shoulders and stay on top of them, it's, it sounds very easy to do, but obviously teams struggle to do it, you know. Um, you know, like, like I said, man, we're just going to go out and play our rugby and see how we go. And, and what, what is Andy's messaging of that? How would you describe the way that he is with the team and, and the, the sort of environment he's developed? <clears throat> um, he he encourages you to be yourself and not take away from the fact of this, I guess, the skills and the point of difference that you have to, as to how you got into this position. And then it's finding a way around a structure that Andy puts in front of us to make sure that we can express ourselves and um, you know, we've got some freakish athletes as well. I think if you look at our back rowers at the moment, I mean, pretty dynamic, our six, seven and eight, and even our locks tied moving into a lock. It was, you know, predominantly a six a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it's very athletic and dynamic and just giving those boys the opportunity to play at the line, play little tips inside, balls out the back, six, they're turning corners, having forwards there, you know, it's all, it's all part of the, part of the whole, you know, our whole system and, the quicker we can get off the ground and get into shape, I think we can cause some problems. The only tier one nation Andy hasn't beaten, Andy Farrell's Island, hasn't mm. beat, is France. Will that be irking him? Um, I don't know. I mean, I know you can get as cliche as you want, but sure, look, it's the next game. It happens to be France. I didn't know that he hadn't beaten beaten France. I haven't beaten France yet, so I wouldn't mind having a go at them as well. But um, like I said, they're, they're a very, very good outfit and I don't think you can take too much from last week um, credit to Italy like I said earlier but you know we've got a got a fairly big challenger ahead and we're gonna we're gonna step step fairly f strong into it yeah and James good job with your drive from the weekend must have been a satisfying <laughs> yeah. yeah he hasn't stopped talking about oh, it yeah it's, like you said I, I've been showing everyone the video and um, no I was Man, it was a funny. We watched it again this morning a couple of phases beforehand. Pete gets a, a boot to the rib or something. I'm just screaming at him to just do something. And he ends up lazily falling into a tackle on the inside. And I'm thinking, oh, no. And, um, you know, Ports and Shino came around and I felt we could just get into the space and, you know, bigger put it in the bread basket. And um, the boys were surprised I made it all the way. And, um, you know, it was pretty pretty satisfying, I guess, because in a, a few years ago I wouldn't have done that. I would have done something pretty stupid. So, um, what do you mean? Ah, sure. Look, I would have tried to whack someone or shot in, or um, you know, and I just kind of was in the right place at the right time. And sure, look, that's that's all she wrote. Yeah. <laughs>